Hello and good morning everyone and welcome to today's session. Um, today's session is about discovering the world around us through exploration and imagination. I'm going to start by introducing myself first. Um, my name is Shimada Nazim and I'm a mother of four wonderful children aged between 18 and 8. Um, I moved to Dubai in 2001, so that's about 19 years being here so far. And I've worked in the early years sector for about tw for the last 20 years. And I'm currently a nursery manager at Career Kids Nursery. It's a Norwegian nursery in Dubai. Firstly, I'd like to say that we're all grateful to the Abu Dhabi Early Years Childhood Authority for making this initiative a reality. It's always lovely to share um, information and um, take back learning opportunities from such platforms. So thank you so much for that. Before I go any further, I'd like to mention that your active participation is important throughout the session. Right now, I have everyone on mute to avoid any background noises, which may distract us from listening to the webinar. Throughout the presentation, we'll be managing the chat functionality. You can enter your questions and comments in the question box at any time. I'll come to these answers at the end of the session and try to answer as many as possible. So please put them there. If, if you'd like to ask me a question in person, you can also do that too. You can see the raise hand icon on your screen. If you press that, we'll know that you'd like to come on air. Uh, once you do this, um, we'll have somebody, um, to, uh, we'll have, ask you to unmute your microphone so we can hear you and then you can fire away with your questions. Any questions that I don't manage to cover in the Q&A sessions due to limited time, um, I'll be uploading those onto the website. All participants will receive an email to the link to the relevant section and also a recorded version of this webinar will be available on the website as well. Um, I'd just like to mention our question. We had a pre-webinar survey. The questions were, the question one was, what would you usually give to your child to play with? Um, and I had three options. We had expensive and technical gadgets and devices. We had toys bought from a toy store and wooden utensils, um, kitchen, uh, kitchen items, fabric boxes and baskets. 12% um, of you said expensive gadgets and devices. 28% of you said toys bought from the store. And the last one was a most, which was 60%. So let's see where this webinar takes us. Um, have you made the right choice? So I'm just going to open up my screen sharing right now. Um, and let's hope we can. Yep, yeah, uh, no. So we have to do from the beginning. Yeah, there we are. Okay. So discovering the world around us through exploration and imagination by me. Um, although it's quite widely accepted that very young children need play um, as they progress through the school system, the focus actually usually moves on the learning aspect of play more and measuring learning more than allowing them to just explore. And despite the fact that play is beneficial to our life um, and it supports imagination, creativity and happiness, it's still seen as a very frivolous waste of time by many and not really relevant to proper learning. Um, I did mention in my previous webinars um, about the importance of play. So this is something that we'll be focusing on this morning. Um, and firstly, I'd like us to understand the concept or the meaning of learning. Um, and in fact, if you look up the meaning of learning, it comes up with um, words like uh, acquiring new understandings and new knowledge, behavior, skills, values, attitudes and preferences. And there's an important distinction between play um, as an activity for learning and playfulness as an attitude. <clears throat> um, there's a playfulness um, as an attitude is more about um, exploring new experiences. It's about imagining, um, uh, bringing about a spirit of make-belief um, and exploring different possibilities. Um, exploration and imagination as being the main topic of today's webinar, therefore is seen as uh, playing a really crucial role in child development and learning. And the aim for today is to provide you with that information and ideas on how you as parents um, <clears throat> can help nurture and encourage your exploration um, the exploration in children, their creative, creativity and the imagination. So these three words will come up often throughout this morning's session. Um, and every, every child, as we know, has an urge to learn, has an urge to explore. And it's, it is um, our responsibility in the beginning to allow them to have the opportunity and allow them um, space, time uh, and materials to be able to um, 
fulfill those needs and fulfill those urges. And it's crucial that we take joy in the exploration and the creativity thoughts and their acts. So the first um, word that I'm going to look at is creativity. What do we mean by creativity? Um, creativity is the ability to, to create original ideas that produce positive effects. Creativity is the capacity and the ability to think uniquely, um, imagine things in order to um, make things happen, maybe uh, to bring into existence. And having a creative outlet is really, really important for all children. So we, it, the creativity in itself um, gives us opportunities for problem solving, um, skills to expand our knowledge, th skills to uh, think outside the box. So that first word is creativity. The second word is exploration. So I looked up the, um, the dictionary version of the word exploration and the words that kind of pop up on the screen, as you can see, is investigation, survey, research, um, inspection, examination, inquiry, scrutiny, observation. So these are all the words that are associated with the word exploration. Um, and children learn through having first-hand experiences um, that of the ideas uh, or the choices that they've made of play and these are the kind of words that kind of come to mind when we think of the um, the outcome of exploration so they, they they're learning through these um, through these means the next word is imagination now imagination the words that have come up um, on the screen from our dictionary explanation is um, a faculty or action of forming new ideas um, or Im images or concepts of external objects not present to the senses. So how far does your child use their imagination? Are they engaging in make-believe? Are they engaging in pretend play? Are they um, trying out different roles, different personalities? Uh, are they becoming something that maybe they're not in real life? That's imagination. And how far have we supported um, these three concepts and the creativity of a child, um, the ability for children to explore and investigate, and the ability for children to use their imagination. Um, so these are the three words that are very important in today's session. Now I'm going to start with a few, um, a few quotes um, and a few things that stood up to me um, when I was researching on the topic. Um, we know that when we explore, our imagination can take us um, anywhere. Now, uh, the first example that popped up was um, Alexandra Graham Bell, the person who invented the telephone. It must have started with an idea, an imagination, and then all of a sudden has become this huge concept that's something that we cannot live without at the moment in today's world. So um, something he said was, then I shouted into M, as in the mouthpiece, the following sentence, Mr. Watson, come here, I want to see you. To my delight, he came and declared that he had heard something. Um, and he understood what I said. So there you go, that was the first step to take forward an imagination or an idea that this person had. A very well-known um, person, Einstein, um, and said, logic will get you from A to B, but imagine, imagination will take you everywhere. Imagination is everything. Um, and it is a preview of life's coming attractions. The true sign of intelligence is not knowledge, but imagination. So he also has put a huge um, importance on the words of imagination and exploration. Um, and, and the fact that it takes you places, it will take you far, it will allow you to um, uh, bring about different skills that are very important for um, everyday life. And if I go on to some more quotes here, uh, just quickly whisk through them. Um, uh, we've already spoken about Einstein. He also said that pay, pay attention to imagination and you will discover all you need to be fulfilled. And that's an amazing quote. Um, the best thing that you can do for your child is give them space to explore. And there's no seven wonders of the world. In the eyes of the child, they are seven million. So um, this is setting the base for the importance of those three concepts in early years education and the time that you spent with your children at home. Um, exploration. Um, we know that at, at the age of three months, infants are capable of laughing. They reach out. They're um, having back and forth communication with coos with you. Um, they use different cries and various um, to express various needs, identify voices and faces and anticipate um, routines and activities and searching for sound. 
and sometimes repeating activities that they produce an interest that have actually produced interesting results. So as we know, young explorers, young children um, are, are, are totally absorbed and they open they, as they grow um, they can, can take those skills further. They learn um, they learn that the power, these powerful skills show that even early in life infants are developing in many different ways. So as they grow from being a small baby to being a toddler, they will take those ideas and those concepts that they've learned from the very beginning and then start put those into actions. Um, uh, some of the concepts here, maybe opening, shutting, filling, dumping, picking up, dropping, um, and these are endless fascinating activities that children engage in to keep themselves busy and to explore. Um, and infants are in usually are in, um, are in the sensory motor stage of development and therefore learning by exploring, receiving feedback from the entire body. So they are practicing those skills through the exploration that they have. Um, they learn through all their senses, um, this sense of taste, sense of smell, sense of sound, a um, uh, sense of uh, touch I've mentioned as well. So these are all the different kind of um, senses that, children, that infants and toddlers learn from. Um, as they go from infancy to toddlerhood, um, they're able to explore those different aspects and, and, and actually engage in activities that will enhance those exploratory skills. They develop um, control of their muscles and they're able to um, gradually focus on their learning um, and take their learning that step further. Um, as we know, when babies are born, I mentioned in my last seminar as well, um, for babies, a baby's child, uh, a baby's brain, sorry, develops from zero to five years and it develops 90% of the brain capacity on brain and their learning happens mostly in those years so for us to um, present them with opportunities of learning through those first few years of life is essential um, and we want those synapses to be triggered we want those connections to be made and the best way to do that is actually um, provide them with opportunities to learn and explore um, at a very young age and then they'll take it is age and stage appropriate so you would find the toddlers learning from particular um, uh, activities and then you'll just enhance those further which i'll be speaking about in a while um, I go to the next one now. Okay, infants and toddlers learn and explore through all their senses, as mentioned. They're, they're smelling, they're hearing, they're seeing, tasting items in their environment. Some of the pictures you can see here are different ways um, uh, toddlers enjoy their exploration and, and, and learning through those exploratory activities. Uh, they gain valuable information about their world um, and interaction with these materials offer experiences and knowledge upon which they build in later life. Um, so, and, and, why, and these are some of the, the reasons why we should in, encourage exploratory play in our infants and toddlers. Um, and then they take it further when they're slightly older. I mean, as we've mentioned, it stimulates brain connections. Um, it, in, it, it supports early cognitive development. So. Um, a cause and effect. What happens when I do this? What happens when I do that? Um, what happens when I shake this toy? Does it make a sound? Is it heavy? Is it cold? So these are some of the concepts you can use. Problem solving skills. Now, if I push this button, what would happen? If I pull this string from the container, what will happen? So they understand, they learn different problem solving skills. Good self-esteem. Um, they become confident about their learning, especially when we um, when we praise their learning and we support them through it and become play partners, children develop a huge um, sense of independence, um, sense of confidence, their self-esteem is, is just taken to heights. Uh, they enjoy their critical thinking ability, their resource, resourcefulness is expanded. They work on that and build on that as they grow. So there's so many different ways that children learn through exploratory play from when they're a baby to when they're a toddler. Um, and some of the ways babies and toddlers learn, I'll go through now. So um, babies and toddlers love to play with different objects around the home. Um, and don't worry, you don't need to spend lots of money. And a lot of the times, as we must see, we, our houses are full of um, store-bought toys, um, push-button toys or devices to keep our children engaged. Yet we have so many things that are actually in the home that will not cost much 
to be able to engage your children in exploratory play. And, and some of the ideas um, are treasure baskets and heuristic play. Now, these are the two concepts that come up in our nurseries and our early learning centers um, for the babies and the toddlers classes. So as the babies will start off with treasure baskets, which is more items that are, um, more items that are in a, um, a low basket that they can reach. It's natural items, it's mater natural materials. You can have feathers, we can have um, maybe little stones and so make sure they're the right size so a child cannot put them in their mouth. So you can have pebbles, stones, uh, feathers, acorns are amazing, um, pine cones are really good. So these kind of things that you put into a basket, children can learn through those as they provide children with more, uh, babies with more sensory stimulation, the touch, the taste um, at the moment, at this age group is the main way that babies learn. It's through their senses. And so we, we need to provide them with opportunities to kind of build on those sensory experiences. Um, as they get older, maybe one or two years, we move to heuristic play. Um, usually once they start walking and heuristic play is defined as enabling children to discover or learn something for themselves. It's rooted in young, I mean, we all know um, children are curious and they use a natural, natural curiosity to guide their learning and for us to um, provide them with um, objects and materials that will help enhance that is what our prime objective is. Um, items in baskets uh, can be a mixture, in here is the basket, can be a mixture of man-made and natural items, whereas treasure baskets, as mentioned, are usually just natural items. So as they grow, we can actually, um, if you look at the examples here, we can actually segregate the baskets as um, shiny materials, so shiny metal, metal type of materials, kitchen utensils, we can have wooden um, objects, a range of calculators or different uh, button stimulated toys but then it's their way of kind of pressing buttons and understanding the concept of these different devices. Um, we can have different types of fabric, we can have a fabric that's rough to touch, soft to touch, silky, um, see-through fabric, you know you can have a range of things that are in, in, in the basket. And all these, the main concept for these um, heuristic and treasure baskets is just to simulate their sensory experiences because from their sensory experiences, they make sense of the world around them. Um, we, understand, we understand that when, when they hear sound, it can be a loud sound, a soft sound, um, and, and they, they will explore that if they shake it harder, it's gonna be a faster sound, if they shake it slow, it's gonna be a low sound. And you can become play partners in this play as well. It's really important for to become a part of their play. If you feel like they, they're fine on their own, step back for a while, watch and observe. And when you feel that they'd like to have somebody to play with, step in and become part of their play experience as well. So these are just some of the um, treasure and heuristic baskets um, available or you know, that we're using in these centers, um, in nurseries and early learning centers. What you can do is you can actually go onto Pinterest. I think it's really, it's um, a, a brilliant platform for these kind of, um, activities and ideas and just type in um, heuristic baskets, treasure baskets, the age of your child and you'll come up with a range of ideas that you can actually um, create within your own home so that going out to fun spend lots and lots of money. Um, water play, children love to play with water, maybe add ice to the water for different sensory experiences, maybe have warm water in one bowl, have slightly colder water in the next bowl that will also trigger sensory experiences. Um, children love to play with Play-Doh as we all do. Um, so Play-Doh is also another way of in, um, enjoying um, sensory experiences with your child. And, and it, Play-Doh made at home is very, very easy and actually could send all of you a recipe for Play-Doh. It's something I'd like to share with a lot of my parents in our setting, um, often doing workshops to um, show parents how easy it is to make Play-Doh at home. Um, the ones usually bought at stores have some kind of chemicals in them to preserve them. Whereas the one that we make at home and from scratch and the recipes are online, so you can get online too. They all have edible materials in them. It's really salty, so I don't think they'd like to eat much of it. Um, but at least, you know, if they do, it's not gonna have an effect on their health as would the ones at the store. Gloop, a very simple recipe, scone, uh, cornstarch and a little bit of water. 
looks like a solid when it's placed on, uh, on in the bowl or in the tray that you're going to use. And as children lift it, it becomes a liquid and then turn, returns back to a solid form. Again, that's teaching children a lot of things about solids, liquids, and um, again, um, triggering their sensory experiences. Moon sand is something that's um, something new um, that we've all loved to make. And again, it's a really simple recipe, again, found online. Um, take your children outdoors, allow them to feel the grass under their feet, maybe the sand under their feet, uh, the crunching of the leaves, um, just the roughness of twigs. So these are all again supporting um, stimulation of sensory experiences. Boxes, containers, let them go inside the boxes, outside the boxes. Um, as you can see in the picture here, this is an activity that children love um, to do crayons and let them be inside the box. Let's see what they do. Um, again, you're allowing them to explore their senses. Um, pouring activities, pouring and filling activities are good. Maybe have a bowl of rice or pasta and an empty bowl. Allow children to pour from one to the next. These are all kind of activities that will keep your children busy. Um, another thing are really simple ideas are your sensory bottles. So if you have empty water bottles, um, clean them out, dry them and put different kind of materials inside them. Pasta, rice, um, shells soil, um, glitter with water, you know, anything can go inside those sensory bottles, maybe even sensory bags. So the Ziploc bags are also a brilliant idea. Again, these are stimulation, um, really easy activities that stimulate uh, children's um, uh, senses and allow them to go on that path of learning. Um, mirrors are amazing to have in the classroom and at home. So if you have a mirror, there's uh, plastic mirrors, if you don't want to use a glass mirror. Um, for safety reasons and, and, and take it outside. Let them look at the, the reflection that's in the mirror. It might be the sky, it might be trees. If you have it at home, give them paints, let them paint them looking in the mirror and seeing their reflections. So, um, mirror activities are really well known for young children as well. Um, a water, mat, water painting, give them paints. Jello is a really good way to stimulate um, sensory experiences. Spaghetti, the spaghetti, spaghetti you see in the picture there, they've got the digging for spaghetti worms, which is a really good um, and fun activity children really enjoy. Or you can simply dye them with some food coloring and allow them to explore that sensory experience too. However, equally important is the stimulation of children's imagination. Um, through their stages of development. So as children grow, they start to explore with the background information they've had from when they were younger, from their um, exploration, um, from their creativity. They've now come to the next point of imagination. So now they have the capacity to engage in different activities where they become something that they're actually not in the real world. And the most beautiful thing um, as you can see in the court here, is the beautiful thing is always entering through imagination. So, um, you know, we can, uh, as uh, Albert Einstein mentioned, that the true sign of intelligence is not through knowledge, but imagination. So let's fulfill that. And let's um, provide children with um, environments where they are able to um, benefit, from, benefit from imagination. Now we know that imagination creates language rich environments because there'll be lots of communication going on. They might be speaking to themselves, um, just enacting being a different person or a different role. Um, and, and that creates um, opportunities for language development. They might invite you to join them, which um, increases, um, increases communication skills. Uh, it, 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 it supports children developing creativity, inventiveness, inventiveness and the resourcefulness. So with what you've supplied, the materials or the items or the, or the um, objects that you've provided with them, they will make use of those objects and make their imagination, imaginary play um, as interesting as they want it to be. Um, again, with interaction, it enhances social skills. So maybe they're engaging in some imaginary play with a friend, with a sibling or with yourself or even on their own. Um, and, and imagining that somebody's in front of them and they're playing with them. So again, um, enhances social skills, improves planning and organizational skills and boosts independence and individuality. Um, some more benefits, it allows for self-expression. 
um, and it enhances storytelling skills, helps develop life skills, foster leadership qualities, and, um, it, and it supports literacy and written expression skills. As you can see in the picture here, this um, it looks like he's wearing a superhero's cape, and that's with a simple scarf that was provided to him and some blocks. So with his height, he might be ready to fly off and become the superhero that he wants to be, or with a stick, he could it could be a wand, um, and or with uh, with maybe playing underneath the table can become a den. So we need to be able to provide them with these um, opportunities and play spaces and to support and um, value their imaginary play because as they grow, that will, these skills will be needed for, um, to support their adult, adult life and the skills that they need as they're growing up. Um, how can we encourage and support opportunities for imaginative play? So we want all those skills in our children, so how do we do it? Um, we've spoken about how we can encourage um, creativity in, in, in an exploration in the toddlers and babies. So how can we imagine, um, support imaginative play as your children are growing up? Um, it can be indoors, outdoors, or you can um, give a specified room or a corner to a child. And we just need environments where, to, where material is accessible um, and they can access these props independently. Um, dinner tables, chairs and couches, fantastic areas to make dens and tents and um, maybe caves. Um, and as you can see, it's, it's a wonderful um, ex um, experience for children when they've given that space and opportunity. Many times they say, oh no, leave the blankets on the bed, what are you doing? Don't move that from here. But you know what? Give them the opportunity sometimes and maybe give them the responsibility that when you finish playing, you need to put everything back where it was. Um, uh, you can have, um, again, you can give them cargo boxes, you can give them uh, wooden spoons, blankets, pots, pans, all clothes, bags, even tweaks. I mean, the list is, as mentioned, it's endless. Whatever you give a child to play with, they will manage somehow, maybe with support needed or maybe not with support, they'll manage to um, make those items into something to support their imagination and to support their make believe and their pretend play. Um, uh, and then you'll actually be surprised um, that your home is actually filled with pops that can be invented, reinvented into other things. Um, you see the little girl here is in a simple cardboard box and a plate, and that's a steering wheel for her car. Um, so don't worry about spending lots and lots of money. We can definitely um, provide opportunities for these play, uh, play types with your children without spending any kind of extra money or going out of your way to go to the toy stores and stocking up. Um, as mentioned a couple of times, be your child's play partner. Play with them. Um, they may want you to come and have a tea party with them, and be, um, you know, or maybe you can be on the other end of you can be on the other end of a, of a phone call, ordering a pizza. Um, you can be the, um, the shopkeeper while somebody's baking in the background. Uh, there's there's so many different things that you can do by becoming involved in your child's play. Um, you can arrange play dates with maybe if you're not having the time to be with your children during this playtime. Siblings can also be um, and play a huge role in such play. And also maybe having play dates where children can explore together. Your, the imaginative play that children will have with siblings or children their own age will be slightly different to what they have with you possibly. So if you find that and you want to give them a mixture, you can do that too. Um, some more pointers um, I'd like to mention. Um, it, please make sure you provide safe spaces and opportunities for children to explore large muscle movements, so not confined spaces. If you don't have, maybe move furniture to a side. Um, be sure that uh, the equipment or the objects or materials that you, you give to children are um, age appropriate, so they're not small or sharp objects. They are um, with a smooth edge or objects that are play safe for children. And supply materials that allow for exploration of temperature, texture, size, shape, um, things that can be pulled apart, things can be opened, closed, screwed up, screwed up, and screwed closed, filled, dumped, poured. Um, these are all the concepts that you can keep in mind when you're choosing what to provide for your child's play space and play environment. Allow children to clean up minor messes they may have created, as mentioned in the um, slide before. 
if a child decides to bring their blankets and pillows downstairs for their den play, it's fine as long as they promise to come put it back. If they've opened up um, a pasta bowl and, have, and the play is to open and close pasta or pour and they've dropped a few on the floor, create a situation where they're ready and they know that they've got to tidy that up at the end of their play experiences. Um, give children real items. This is a huge one. I always believe in real photographs and real items, real life items. The play sets, the play tea sets, um, um, don't create that real sense of imagination as would proper crockery or proper tea sets um, or real photographs around uh, uh, albums are fantastic. Instead of reading sto um, storybooks and magazines, having real life albums or um, proper utensils, blankets, scarves, these are all things that create that real sense of um, imagination in your child. Um, Honouring their preferences and allowing them to make choices, that's really important because it does support self-esteem and confidence uh, and permit child to decide when an activity is complete. Maybe they've made a den um, and they don't want it to be pulled apart just now. They haven't finished, they want to have their tea and come back to it, respect that. There might be some ongoing projects going on um, with some of the um, the items that you provided with them. But they, just because they've moved away from that area does not mean that they have finished um, their play. They may want to continue. Um, maybe ask them, have you finished? No, okay, we'll leave it for some time. And then give them a tap, give them the, the, I mean, give them that support and give them that empowerment to put away things when they're finished and tidy up at the end. So as children grow, and this is, I think it's my last slide, as children grow, thank you, as children grow, they go through different stages of imagination and exploration. They start as, as babies, maybe um, exploring themselves as, and their bodies as young beings. As they grow into toddlers, we provide them with opportunities for heuristic and treasure baskets and other sensory um, stimulating activities. And as they grow further, three to four years, they, they become, they actually start making sense of their surroundings and about the world around them. And then they re very readily engage in imaginary play. But throughout that journey, we need to be there and we need to support them through it um, and provide them with opportunities, play spaces, materials, objects. And um, as mentioned at the end, the opportunity to choose, give them choice. Um, so that is, the importance of imagination and exploration. I'm going to now turn on to the question and answer session. So if I, oops, where am I? If I stop my screen sharing and we have a chance I have. Okay, so if we have any questions I'll just open up my question. See, that's open too much. There you go. So if you have any questions, please fire away. I have one question coming through and the question is, uh, my, uh, you have two children, four years and five years. How do I, um, can they benefit from heuristic play? So as, um, so let's have a look. So heuristic play as mentioned is usually for the toddlers. Um, you can enhance on heuristic play and move on to a concept called loose parts play. So that will be something that's very similar. As children grow, we can adapt this notion of heuristic play uh, to further their exploratory learning. Um, and all the children, yes, so like I said, they will, they, will, they will benefit from loose parts play. And it's when we provide children with materials that can be moved around the room. It can be anything. Um, it can be it can be used in endless ways. It can we can maybe provide boxes, pebbles, shells, uh, feathers, um, wooden planks, wooden blocks, fabrics. Um, I mean the list is bottle caps. These are all things that we have in the home. And if we provide children with an area and have all these loose parts available, you'll be surprised what kind of play they will engage in as they're older. So for your um, four to five year olds. Um, that would be an amazing way to support exploration as well. And that stems from the concept of heuristic play and um, treasure baskets. So instead of confining these items into a basket, we give them opportunities for uh, maybe a, a, a basket full of um, bottle caps, a basket full of straws, a basket full of cardboard tubes, a basket full of feathers, um, wooden blocks, 
get them together in one area and then let the imagination take place. You would be surprised they'll be making sculptures, they'll be making bridges, they'll be making maybe tracks for their cars to go on. Um, there's so many different things that they'll be able to, um, to make. We just provide them, them with that enhanced version of holistic and treasure basket. So yes, they can um, uh, benefit from it, but they'll benefit from it in a different way. And that's called loose pass play. And if you want to learn a little bit more about that, if you Google that term, lots of information will come up and you'll have different ideas uh, where you can set up your play spaces to support that time kind of learning. I mean, some of the things that children will grasp from such play would be problem solving skills, engineering, creativity, concentration, hand-eye coordination, um, scientific thinking, their literacy skills, their mathematical skills, they might have to measure, okay, that's too long to go on here or because it's too short, it's not staying. I'm talking about maybe wooden rods, um, pipes. So they will be able to think in their minds. So they'll be having lots and lots of things going on in their head. Okay, this isn't balancing right now. This ball is too heavy. This ball is too small. Should I bring this one across? And it's lots of trial and error. Um, lots and lots of um, concentration and creativity taking place and lots and lots of ideas. Um, come to mind um, as children are playing. So their play may start as something and may end as something else. So yes, you can um, use the same kind of concept uh, for, for play, but in a different way. Um, another question has come through. Thank you for that. I hope that benefits you. Um, what do I do? What shall I do? My child just doesn't want to play. Okay, as parents and educators, we assume that children will just naturally know how to play. You open door, off they go outside and they'll know how to explore and play with whatever's around them. Indoors, if you provide them with items, we just kind of naturally expect that they know how to play, but sometimes that's not the case. Sometimes we need to prompt them, we need to support them. Um, oh, you know, we, we think they're just going to sit there and make these huge Lego sculptures and make these elaborate paintings because, you know, children should know how to play. Uh, but some children are anxious. They become overwhelmed with maybe the expectations or the number of opportunities that they've got. There's too much going on. So uh, stand back sometime and kind of just observe, are we overwhelming our children with the, um, the materials that we provided, if that's the case, then maybe take some away or maybe be around them as a play partner for some time so they feel confident in playing with the items that you provided them. To play with, um, make them inviting, make the areas inviting, maybe ask the children what they'd like to play with instead of assuming that that's what they're gonna be interested in. So um, if, and, and modeling play is a good way as well. So maybe becoming that, play partner as a, um, as a role model. So modeling play with my entice children towards uh, your child, towards playing, um, having friends over, having play dates, or having the siblings play with your child or your toddler might support um, their interest in playing as well. So get to know your child, kind of look for the cues, what stimulates them, what interests them. I always say follow your child's interest. That was something I spoke about in my last seminar as well. Is, is get to know and understand your child. Um, maybe they're not interested in having um, uh, Play-Doh play. Maybe they'd rather have something else. Maybe they'd be more interested in having a box full of scarves or lots of dress up to play with. So uh, maybe speak to your child or just observe and get to know what they're interested in um, and then create your play spaces accordingly to elaborate on their imagination and creativity that way. Um, any more questions coming through? Okay, so this is a good question, thank you. So we have, how can I ask better questions um, to stimulate learning? So yes, I've, I've said, please you know, become a play partner. So what's your role as a play partner? What kind of questions can you ask to stimulate learning and to stimulate exploration and imagination? Um, I mean, we all know that questioning is a vital tool that we use as teachers and as parents. Um, and as well as answering those questions, we should also try to ask a variety of questions, but not just to test their learning. So be sure not to be too inquisitive or too demanding on particular answers or uh, try not to steer the kind of answers you want. So when you ask some questions, um, be sure that they're quite open-ended questions. Um, so you give them scope to think 
um, to you know to kind of stimulate their curiosity, their imagination, and and you know they maybe challenge their opinions in a way with opening questions and their judgments and values or appreciate those as well maybe not challenging them but appreciating the fact that they may have choices um, they may say a certain sculpture they've made is something and it probably doesn't look like that but we should not give them that um that feeling that we're kind of questioning what they've done um, i think we need to support that and maybe ask open education oh really so how do we make it or, um, what else? Tell me a little bit more about it. So give them open-ended questions. I think that's a really good way to support um, um, how we ask questions uh, when we're being play partners for our children. I do have time for more, some more questions. Let's have a look. Okay. Okay, thank you, Sheila. Um, I love the suggested activities. Oh, thank you. And they're really simple activities and they look difficult sometimes, but if you just scrounge around in your cupboards and your wardrobes and your kitchen cabinets, you'll find so many things that are, are probably not used by you, but will be um, fantastic play experiences for, for children. I have Stephanie on. Um, and hi, how if our kids in school wanted to play with other kids, we are practicing social distancing. Yes. Now, um, amidst the pandemic that we have, uh, more of this, the, the way that I'm speaking about more, more now is having, when you're with your children at home. Now, schools I know have created um, experiences and the created play spaces where um, although there's social distancing, there is some kind of leeway because of bubbles. I'm not sure what it is in the country that you're in, but where we are in Dubai, we have, um, we have a bubble system where children um, in a group of 10 for older than two and a group of eight if younger than two will be together with the same teacher at all times. So within their bubble, we don't expect children to completely socially distance. So in one play area, we could have a maximum of four children. So even if there's two playing together, it is supporting stimulation and creativity as well. Um, and I'm not sure what kind of um, rules have been put down at your children's school, but I know that um, we're not expected to pull children away from each other. We just want to stop um, huge groupings of children. So anything above four will slowly kind of allow the children to be enticed by a different area. Um, and classrooms must also be set up in stations as well. I think that's important for the younger children uh, to be able to move from station to station. So having young, um, less children in the classroom or having more stations in the classrooms allows children to disperse into maybe groups of two or three or even ones and twos. And that's maybe a way we can um, support social distancing in school at the main time, same time, um, not allowing them, um, sorry, still allowing them opportunities to be creative uh, together. So do speak to your school. Um, I don't know, I can't speak for the school that your child's at, but I think, um, I'm sure they're not expecting um, them to play completely alone. Um, and even if they are um, areas set up, children do benefit from sole play. So even if they are playing on this by themselves or they prefer to play alone, that's absolutely fine because they still be acquiring skills through their imaginary play. Thank you for that question, Steph. Stephanie, um, I don't know, maybe if you can let me know the age of your child and what the, what's um, happening at your children's school. Um, maybe I'll be able to support you a little bit more. Um, any more questions? Okay, I've just got another question come through. So my child is five and has autism. Um, he doesn't want to engage in imaginary play. Okay, so children with autis autism um, do enjoy playing, but they can find some kinds of play um, difficult. And it's common for them to have um, limited play or play with only a few toys um, or play in a really repetitive way. For example, your child might be spinning wheels in a car and just keep spinning. So rotation is not something that they are um, more interested in doing or maybe completing the same puzzle again and again and again. So how do we... I'll, how do we support children to engage in different types of play if they're autistic? Um, and we know that autism, um, children who have autism are affected um, in their social skills and their communication skills. And it can also affect development of important play abilities. Um, so your child can still learn and develop skills to play. Um, and you can help. 
So as a parent, uh, playing with your child and connecting with them um, and being on their level is, is, is a good um, way to put that forward. Um, and it's okay for your child to have just a few play interests at the moment. And um, I think focus on getting to know what the child's interest is and maybe um, move things around to support that interest. Uh, and maybe someone could give you some ideas. Uh, in explorative play, maybe your child will probably explore objects and toys rather than playing with them, and that's fine. They're still learning. Maybe they're feeling the teddy bear, putting it in their mouth, looking at the doll's hand. The sensory is so the sensory stimulation is vital during this kind of play. Um, if your child is autistic. At this stage, play. Um, children are learning about the world and their senses, the shapes, colors. So anything, it doesn't. Just because your child is not engaging in what we see as imaginary play, they're still exploring. They're still learning. So do give them those things that interest them and allow them to learn, and explore in their way and at their pace. Get to know what their way where is and get to know what their pace is and kind of come to their level um, and support that. Maybe children love um, cause and effect toys. So you press the button and something happens. And what I do support, I mean, although I'm not supporting toys to be bought, I think having a container hole in the top, having um, ribbon or fabric inside and pull. So as he pulls or she pulls, there's more ribbon coming out and have the ribbons in different um, colors or different textures. So within their play um, interest, you're actually bringing in different learning opportunities as well. Um, maybe children, I don't know, maybe he's interested or she's interested in um, uh, constructive play because it's something that's really, um, really well known in children who have autism. Have different blocks, maybe of different textures again. So while they're doing their constructive play, they're actually stimulating their senses. So maybe have a box that's slightly rough, a box that's slightly smooth, um, a box that maybe have spikes on it um, and then uh, allow them to build their construction but in the process you're stimulating different um, different sensory experiences for them. Um, allow children to express themselves is vital um, it's vital because it helps build their self-esteem and independence and confidence and with a child who might have autism it might find it difficult to do that so create experiences and learning opportunities that makes it easy for them to do that. Um, so I hope that's helped. Um, so don't stress if it's not the way you expect it to be. Um, it is their journey and their journey will be paced and their journey will be um, the way they want it to be. We're just there as supporters and, and the way we can best support our children is getting to know them. Are there any more questions for me? Let's have a look. Thank you for the compliments, thank you. Um, just to sum up, um, just to sum up today's session, I've gone through different concepts of how you can be involved um, directly or indirectly in a child's learning and exploration, imagination, opportunities that you give them. So what can you do to support that? This is the main, uh, main um, reason behind today's session. So I hope you've gone away with different ideas um, and different things in your mind um, to support that kind of play. Uh, and we know that as children grow, they um, self-exploration and, and discovery are the two main elements in their um, in their child in their development. So, how do we focus on those? How do we support those to get the best outcome and to prepare children for for um, the next stages of life, school? teens, adulthood, um, because what we do in these first few years of life is, is, is very important. Um, and what opportunities we provide them is really important too. Um, so do think um, about the um, different ideas that have been suggested today. Um, do look around your home and see if there's an area you'd like to provide for your children. Um, if you have any more questions about the different areas or the different materials that you might have lying around that maybe I haven't mentioned in today's session, do reach out. Um, you can um, contact me on my email, which is elcmanager at careerkids.ae. 
um, or you can maybe contact me through the, the, the website and I'll be able to answer some of your questions. Um, Sheila has said, thank you so much for this very relevant and useful sharing. Thank you, Ms. Miller, you are so great. Oh, that's so sweet. Um, I, I think a lot of it to do with the passion that we have as educators as well. We want to just see the best for every child of every age. And I think um, allowing you as parents to have the opportunities to explore and learn all the different ways that we can stimulate a child's brain um, and get them ready for the next stages of life. Um, I think that's really important for us to do that. Um, not many parents are born uh, with the, or come with those, uh, with that knowledge that they need to support children. And I think us as, as supporters, um, I think it's vital to be there for them, for you as parents and for your children. So um, thank you for the appreciation, Sheila. That's really nice to hear. Um, if there's anything else I can help you with, um, I'm still here for um, a few minutes. But you can send any questions through. Um, if there's anything else you'd like to know from me, do let me know and I'll, I'll try my best to support you on that. But yes, I enjoyed today's session and yes, it's a, it's, it's a topic that's very close to my heart and I hope that you've all gone away with something that you're going to work on um, with your children at home and do give us feedback. Um, and I think we have, um, I think I have a, let's have a look. Um, I was hoping for a, for the panel. Do we have the panel ready or are we going to do it after the session? Do we have the a question, sorry? Our, no, okay, I think that would, okay, we have the poll, sorry, I'm saying panel, poll. We have the, do we have the poll ready? Yeah, we do have the poll ready, Hara. Can we bring the poll up, please? Ah, okay. So again, we're going to, that's referring to the question that came up at the beginning and it's what would, like, what would you like to give your, your child to play with now? And 100% of you have said wooden kitchen utensils, fabric boxes and baskets, which is absolutely phenomenal. So thank you so much. Um, I'm getting more and more coming up. So and you're all saying the right thing. So I'm so pleased that you've taken something away from today's session um, and you will see a huge difference um, in the way children behave or play or use those skills that are so vital for the next stages of life. We're still going. I still have, I still have attendees viewing the question. So I'm going to give you a few more minutes just to do that. Maybe a minute. We're getting more coming through. Thank you. Ah, hi, BC Nursery. Thank you for coming and joining the session. Um, I hope you can take some of this across into your nursery as well and use it for your um, classrooms. Amidst the pandemic, it is possible. Thank you, I think, yeah, we're still, we're still going. Still have people voting, which is really good. Brilliant. Any more, um, maybe any more suggestions, any comments that you'd like me to share while you're all online? Brilliant. So I think I'm going to end. The, are we ending the poll? The attendees are now viewed. Brilliant. Okay, so we've ended the poll and 100% of you um, answered uh, in what I see is a correct answer and that's lots and lots of um, natural and home-based resources. Enjoy your play with your children, become a part of their learning experiences um, and yes children can learn through the very simplest of things that we provide them so enjoy it and until next time thank you so much bye-bye. <laughs>